everybody. Welcome back to another 2021 Chevy Silverado video. Well, this week I'm going to install some backup sensors in my rear bumper. It's a project I've done before on my 2002 Ranger and I had great results. Stay tuned. I got this kit on Amazon and it was uh, not expensive. Uh, it's very simple to install. It's plug and play. Um, basically comes with a control box here. You just plug all four sensors in and then you plug the, the power lead into it. It gets power from uh, the reverse light or the reverse light circuit, I should say. And then inside the cabin, there is a little speaker, which uh, warns you of the object that might be behind your bumper. Now they have different models that also have like a, a monitor, but I just wanted something that was as close to factory as possible. So these do come in different colors. My bumper is black. And so this one comes with four black sensors. And in addition to this kit, which I will link below, it's very easy to find on eBay and Amazon. I picked up uh, some wire loom and a hole saw that I'll be using to drill into my rear bumper. That's gonna be the toughest part. And then some uh, power taps right there. So let's go take a look at the truck. Okay, here at the truck, as you can see, black on black, it's gonna look about as uh, factory as it possibly can. And I do have a picture of where the factory ones go. Uh, one goes approximately here and then one approximately there on both sides. And fortunately, there's plenty of access room behind there. So the control box and everything gets stuck up underside. And fortunately, I have the wiring, the towing package. And it's even, <laughs> the circuit is even marked on here. So it's the center pin wire the center pin that's actually the reverse circuit so I won't have to tap into the tail light uh, you could easily do that and I did that on my Ranger but I'm hoping this will just be cleaner with everything located kind of tucked up or underneath the bumper and then I do need to run the speaker wire under the truck along the frame rail and then here in the back under the carpet, I'll show you when I'm under the truck, there is, uh, well, there are several actually, uh, rubber plugs in the floor. So I'll just have to kind of uh, cut a hole into it and then run the speaker uh, cable under the carpet. And I'm just going to put it back here someplace rather than putting it under the front um, dash. There's really not enough lead to do that and I did this in my Ranger, put it in the back, and it really worked out since you are obviously looking to the rear, or you should be looking to the rear when you're reversing. So let's lay everything out. Just to kind of give you a close up of this, this is the uh, control box. You can see it says power monitor. Again, that is if you get the version that has the uh, LCD monitor. I didn't, uh, didn't want or need that. And then, uh, one, two, three, four for your sensors. So I guess in lieu of monitor, we're just gonna plug the speaker into it. Everything is different size. And this just gets tucked up under. Now I will wrap this in some plastic and uh, cause it's obviously, I don't think this is waterproof. So it's meant to go in the vehicle, but because I have a pickup truck, that's not gonna happen. But uh, no problem, I did that with the Ranger and uh, it worked out just fine. Wrapped it in uh, plastic, no problem. At the power wire, again, you'll tap into the ground and do the reverse circuit. So honestly, the toughest part, toughest as in, you know, um, <laughs> the part that's gonna make me sweat the most is actually drilling into my perfect condition factory bumper. So I did pick up this step bit. And again, I'll link everything below. This is a very simple project, very easy for you to do. I've done this before. And 
There are more expensive kits out there, certainly. Um, but honestly, I used this exact kit and it worked for a very long time with zero issue. As far as I know, it's probably still working in my 2002 Ranger. That video is in its playlist. So uh, I guess let's clean the bumper, tape it off and get started. We're gonna drill some holes. All right, back here at the truck, I've got some painter's tape laid down in both of the areas where I'm gonna be drilling. Again, two on each side, one there, one there, one there, one there. And I'll put the picture on the screen that I found, kind of my uh, visual guide. I don't have any actual measurements, but I mean, this isn't that big of a deal. We'll take a look under and you can see that both areas back there are clear and I can easily reach up and uh, there, there's plenty of room to run the wires and it uh, won't get near the exhaust. So let's take a look underneath. All right, here under you can see one of the areas is gonna be right in here and the other is gonna be, I guess if we go to this other side over here, yeah, right up in here. So not super convenient um, with this in the way, but plenty of room to access. And as long as I'm under here, this is the wiring for the trailer package. And uh, I just need to figure out which one of these is that uh, is the center, the, uh, the reverse light, which I'll do with a, a test probe or something, but we'll do that last. I know that that's there and that's, that's pretty convenient. So I uh, have to figure out which one of those it is. All right, let's start drilling. All right, both sides are marked off. Got a uh, little mark there and one there. And the nearest I can tell, they're perfectly even on all sides. Again, this is just kind of going off that picture and uh, looking at body lines and making sure there's nothing back there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drill a pilot hole to start. And then on this step bit, I've got it kind of marked off. I'm gonna take this very, very slow because one thing you don't wanna do is make these holes too big. So I'll do the pilot hole, do a little bit. Um, this should cut through it very easily. But I think, and you can kind of see the marker line on there. I think that is going to be the depth of it. And unfortunately this is not in millimeters like uh, the directions. The hole saw that came with it, it is 22 millimeter. So I assume that's probably just slightly large for the hole. Anyway, bottom line is we're gonna take it slow. One tip I have is I just used a center punch to kind of uh, put a little dimple, tiny dimple. You don't wanna to press too hard. You don't wanna dent this for each hole. That way the drill bit hopefully shouldn't wander on you. Let's get these drilled. And now with the pilot holes drilled, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you can see those over there too. I've installed the step bit. I'm gonna take this very slow. I'm gonna constantly check the circumference. Again, we don't want this to be too loose. So we're gonna take it slow and I'll fit all four of them. Fish the wires in and we'll go from there. First one is done and actually does a pretty decent job of deburring all this around here, but I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I get any burrs off. And I'm also going to paint this edge black before I install these. So three more to do. Well, the hardest part's done, thankfully. And I did touch up all four with some black paint, uh, actually two coats. It's nice and dry. And now I can go ahead and install these sensors and I'll let the wires hang down. Then I'm gonna take a dinner break and I'll come back to it. Um, this is really tough because there's not a whole lot of lip around here, if I can get that thing to focus. So there's a, a bit of rough edge around 
three of these. I don't know why that one's not. Um, I don't think you'll see it because uh, this should cover it, but just be aware that there's actually very little tolerance in this. I mean, once it goes in, there's not a lot to, uh, you know, to cover up, but should be fine. We'll make it work. And just real quickly, these, uh, these do say up on the back. So has a bit of a kind of like an eyebrow over it. So that goes to the top. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and centered and then push it in. All four of them are in. Happy with the way they look. Now just for some wiring, but time for a quick dinner break for me. See you shortly. I've got all the wires routed, wrapped in the wiring loom and uh, ready to secure basically up here where you can't see it behind the bumper. But the last thing I need to do is actually run the speaker. And I did some investigating yesterday. I got to take out the rear floor mat, pull up this piece, which just comes right up. It's very simple. Just like this. And uh, once that is up, you can take, you loosen this if you want, but essentially the carpet and the pad is under there and then the floor. And there is a rubber grommet someplace around here, which we'll see under the truck. I'm gonna slice a little hole in it. Then I've got a coat hanger I'm gonna kind of fish up and uh, be able to fish the speaker wire down and into the box so I can get that secured. So I'll show you what that looks like. All right, I'll show you. I've got the razor knife. Oh, look at the light. There you go, right there. The razor knife is sticking up through the rubber plug in the floor. So you can kind of see it right there in the middle under the light. So now I just need to make the hole bigger and route the wire. Here under the truck, you can see the, well, it's more of a plastic, really not rubber, the grommet. Um, I actually ended up drilling a hole in it and there's plastic uh, sheathing on the outside and the wire runs all the way. I still have to uh, secure it past this point. It's just kind of hanging loose. Uh, goes all the way to the back there. So I'm gonna pick this up. Actually, I'm gonna throw a couple more zip ties up here out of the way, you won't even see it and just enough wire to get to the control box. All right, what's well, actually the next day and uh, it got dark last night. I had the hardest time trying to find a good solid connection. So I had to rig up something temporary here, um, extending the wires. I couldn't uh, sufficiently make it work off of the hitch wiring. It was uh, just gonna be too tight down there. so. I had to, like I said, temporarily extend the wires and uh, I was able to do it right here at the brake light connection. So forgive all this mess. I'm gonna clean all this up now. And then uh, after Donovan here gives me his approval, <laughs> I can go ahead and uh, tie everything together and put it all away. So just about done. Okay, everything's all hooked up. Moment of truth. Let's put it in reverse. And it works. As you can hear, it's progressively louder. And one last time here under the truck. Just to show you what it looks like, I've got the sheathing routed uh, right there. You can't really see it, and that's kind of the idea. And then up here, not the prettiest looking thing, but it uh, it's all uh, <clears throat> tied and secured amongst the factory wiring, which you can see, so you really kind of can't tell the difference. But these leads are just so long and you can't trim them. So, or at least not effectively. So everything's up there, it's waterproof, it's in a plastic bag, everything's double-sided tape uh, secured and 
uh, secured with zip ties to the rest of the wiring loom. So that's it for under the truck. And lastly, there's a little speaker. I just noticed it has a volume switch on it, low and high or off, and I've got it set to high. So I've cleaned it with some window cleaner and the mating surface. I'm gonna put it right here. I know the sun is making it kind of hard to see, but I'm gonna stick it right there and can hide the wire behind this panel. You don't see it, uh, but it is definitely, uh, you know, you can hear it, especially if you're, uh, you know, if you know where to listen, but it's pretty loud as you heard in the previous video. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. And um, this kit was cheap enough. It was less than 30 bucks. I actually bought a second kit just to have in case uh, I need parts, you know, the speaker goes bad or a sensor or something like that. But uh, you know, there are probably more expensive kits on the market, I'm sure of it. But honestly, you know, this does the same thing. And this was tested and, tr uh, you know, the longevity of it uh, was good when I did it on my 2002 Ranger. So I figured I'd give this another shot. But honestly, for less than 30 bucks, plus some connectors and some of your time, you can, you two can do this. So if your truck doesn't have this as a factory option or your car, anything really, don't be afraid to give this a shot. So one more video done. Let me know if you have any questions. The links will be in the description. And if the links have expired, um, just copy and paste the uh, description and search it out. Links expire and unfortunately I can't do anything about that. People are always, uh, you know, messaging me, the links expired, links expired. Well, I, again, I'm not a retailer, so I can't, uh, I can't make, you know, these sellers keep the links active. So that'll do it. Let me know if you have any questions and until next time. We'll catch you on the flip side.